What's good in the whole YouTube? This is Crazy Samurai 71 here bringing you another video. Today I'm bringing a video on Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel Episode 5. This episode is called Game Plan, and this episode was pretty good. As far as Super Ninja Steel episodes go so far, it's actually been one of the better ones, and it was a filler episode, which is interesting. So, I will talk about that, um, you know, as far as the series goes, it's definitely not one of the best ones, but I do think that... So far, it's one of the better ones we've had. Um, it did have foreshadowing. It had some reuse of some old concepts, some things that we saw very recently, and just in general, I thought it was a decent episode. So let's get started with the actual episode itself. The episode starts off with us seeing that everyone throughout Summer Cove is playing this new game called Game Goblin. This includes Preston, who is addicted to it. And what happens is the Rangers appear behind them, and he explains the whole game to them. Um, what the general concept is and he actually buys copies of the game for each of them and the game is selling like crazy so then it switches to one of the buzz cams that are actually watching the rangers uh, talking and playing the game and everyone loves it and we end up seeing on the warrior dome that the game goblin is actually working for Manamodius, and it seems that cosmos is addicted to the game and odious is happy because um the game goblin's plan is that by having everyone play the game he'll be able to power himself up to the point that eventually he'll be able to suck the rangers in trap them and get their power stars so that's an interesting plan then from there what we end up seeing is the rangers go to their class for the day and what happens is that every single time the teacher turns their back to the students the rangers and everyone in the class ends up pulling out their games and starts playing it so that, that keeps on happening back and forth continuously throughout this whole sequence and eventually what happens is is that the teacher ends up dropping something and she catches everyone playing the game and she says the next person that um, plays that game will have it taken and what happens is, is that victor is the only one that continues to play it because she ends up hearing that the game is still on for one of them and she goes over to where victor is there's a portrait of him which she removes and victor is still playing that game so at that point he has it taken then from there what we end up learning is that victor won't be able to get back to the end of the day and then following this what we end up seeing is that the rangers return to the ranger base where Four of the rangers are playing it. Now, not everyone is there, because Preston isn't there, but Levi, Haley, um, Sarah, Calvin, and Brody are there, but Brody is not playing it. But Brody wants to do training, but the rangers are actually still playing it, and he's really upset because he wishes that Preston never gave it to them. And we end up seeing that Preston in the meantime is actually at the summer cove high um you know in the entrance area just kind of playing the game he's really good in it and he's loving it and eventually we end up seeing it switch back to the ranger base where brody takes levi's game and suddenly the four rangers that have it which don't include levi obviously are sucked into the game so what actually happens is is that they're greeted by the game goblin which is an interesting cgi character that they have um, made for this and the game goblin basically says you thought you were playing me when i was playing you this whole entire time and he turns into his monster form which will be his primary form for the episode from here so what ends up happening is that the game goblin as we know gets powered up by points from people playing his game so what we end up seeing is that at first the rangers morph and when they try to attack the game goblin the game goblin jumps up towards a building and points start trickling into the game goblin which powers him up so then he jumps back down and he uses his special attack which is the controller beam attack which makes a lot of sense because he's a video game based monster and so what he does is he actually takes control of one of the rangers specifically brody which leads to brody actually going after the rangers trying to beat on them and also taking their power stars which he does not manage to do but he almost takes out Haley. but what does end up happening is, is that eventually the control beam does not last long enough for him to do so and he turns back to himself and then following this Haley gets the control beam attack done on her because the game goblin gets powered up again and she starts attacking the rangers but of course the same thing happens it stops working so then um, the game goblin tries again and this time the attack is completely avoided so we end up seeing that um, the rangers end up having to uh, what do you call it 
continue to deal with the game goblin um following this what ends up happening is is that they retreat and they actually contact levi telling him what's happening and about maybe finding preston to see if he can help out what we do end up seeing is is that at one point preston gets a thousand points and following this the game goblin gets a thousand points which tells levi that the game goblin is being powered by the points that everyone is giving them is giving him so at that point what ends up happening is is that levi realizes he has to stop preston and that's the big point preston is the one that's giving the most points because he's addicted the most and he's getting the furthest in the game so you know further you get the more points you get which makes a lot of sense and that's how games typically work in a lot of cases um, so that's interesting. So what we do end up seeing is is that Levi does go down to stop Preston from playing. In the meantime, we also see that Victor and Monty are sitting in the same area, and they end up seeing that their teacher actually gives um, Victor's game to Miss Bell, who's this person that's at the front desk of the school, and she's there to you know help out students, obviously. But she keeps an eye on any objects that they want kept away from students and she is told to keep this away from victor for the rest of the day so she agrees to do it and what we end up seeing is that victor looks up at an air shaft which he plans to use to actually do some fishing to get his game so that's an interesting point that is brought up then from there what we end up seeing is that levi and preston go to the ranger base where they end up talking to mick and Levi explains the current situation about how the people that are playing the game are giving the monster points and making the monster stronger, and at the same time, they need to help the rangers that are in the game, but if they touch the games that um, are infected that actually suck them in, they'll actually be sucked in as well. So they have to make sure that they don't do that unless it makes sense to do it, which they end up doing something pretty interesting where mick and levi end up working together to try to stop everyone from playing the game in the meantime preston ends up playing the infected game and actually gets sucked into it to join the other rangers to help out because he feels bad for giving them the game in the first place so following this what we end up seeing is is that um you know preston does get sucked in mick gets the idea from a broom and also a bucket of some plan that he has to make everyone stop playing the game so following this the game um goblin plans to do a major attack against the rangers but preston jumps into action he tries to fight the game goblin ends up using his controller beam attack and turns preston evil thing is is that the game goblin has been powered up pretty intensely so he is able to make this controller beam attack last quite some time so what actually happens is, is that Brody has to fend off Preston while the others try to fight off the Game Goblin. And the Game Goblin gets beaten up pretty badly. So at one point when Preston looks like he's going to be able to take out Brody, the Game Goblin tells Preston to retreat and help him because he's being taken out. So uh, what ends up happening is that Preston gets distracted. Brody, I mean, Brody lives. And the what happens is, is that Preston tries to go after all of them. And... Um, Following all of this, we end up seeing that back in the normal world, Mick comes into the entrance area of the school, basically tells everyone to stop playing, or he'll turn into what Levi turned into when he reached level 10, which was he became green and resembled the Game Goblin because he had the Game Goblin's curse, which is obviously a made-up curse that they made to do this, right? Well, we'll see. So... What we do end up seeing from here is that everyone stops playing it, but what does end up happening is, is that Victor and Monty are actually trying to get the game that Victor wants, and the teacher actually is distracted by Monty trying to get his schedule, and eventually um, the teacher, Miss Bell, has her wig caught on by Victor's hook, and eventually the hook is pulled by Miss Bell, who wants her wig back, Victor falls through the air shaft and has the ventilation tube on him, so he is kind of trapped in that, and eventually he does get his game, but when everyone stops playing the game, he actually falls over, smashes his game, and so no one is playing it now, so they're all good. Uh, the Game Goblin has no new points that he can get. So back in the game world, what we do end up seeing is that the Rangers 
have an advantage because the game goblin can't be powered up anymore. Preston loses his evil side and he ends up joining the rangers and ends up doing a finishing attack against the game goblin which leads to a bonus level where the game goblin is turned big. So the rangers summon their ninja steel megasword but specifically the dragon formation which is one that we do not see that often so it's nice to see it used. Um, the Game Goblin still has his control beam attack, but it does not work the same way. So rather than him being able to control the Ninja Steel Megazord in the Dragon Formation, uh, he can only freeze it in place, which he does, which leads to them actually switching to the Astro um, Ninja Steel Megazord Formation. And the same thing happens, so they have to switch to the Sur Subsurfer Ninja Megazord Formation, which... They managed to avoid the controller beam attack because of the fact that um, the subsurfer Megazord formation actually can use its board to drift and you know avoid attacks more easily. So that does end up happening. Um, what we do end up seeing is that the Rangers do use the Super Ninja Steel modes, which are, is fine. But the thing that is unfortunate that they've done multiple times now is that they decide to actually use. Um, the Super Ninja Steel Blaster, and rather than having Preston do it, which would make the logical sense because, you know, he's the focus for the episode, they actually end up using Brody again, which they've done this several times now. You know, even though um, Brody is the Red Ranger, which I get it from that perspective, they, during Dino Charge, had it where the finishing attack would be done by the Focus Ranger. So it's not like... You know, we hadn't seen this in the past where they would use the Focus Ranger. And also in Super Ninja Steel, we have seen Calvin use the Super Ninja Steel Blaster. So I don't understand why they're not making Preston use it. Um, during Levi's Focus episode, they made um, Brody use it. And again, it should have been Levi. And then in the past episode, the one that happened last week, you know, Sarah and Haley were the focus, and they could have made both of them use it. I mean, seriously, they could have had, like, one grabbing onto one end of it, the other grabbing onto the other end of it, and doing a finishing attack. I mean, that would have been a nice way to, to do a finisher, but they don't do that, which is silly to me, because it's like, most of that, like, the cockpit footage is original footage. It's not like they're taking it from somewhere. That's original footage that they made for this. You know, that was not in... Um, the Japanese season. So that's really important to consider. You know, it's not like they were um, ripping it from something that already existed. So that's kind of a dumb thing to me. But following this, they do manage to destroy the Game Goblin. Then back at sc school, what actually happens is, is that the Rangers return to the base. They are all happy that Preston was able to fight and, you know, they think he's great for what he did. But he also feels bad that he made them all play this game that turned out to be a big disaster. And so he's sorry about that. He's going to go back to his studies and help with training. Uh, Brody wants to train. So a bunch of them go out. In the meantime, Preston asked about how Mick managed to get everyone to stop playing the game, which he explains the whole Game Goblin's curse. And Mick brings up the point that... You know, it's just some made-up thing. At least that's what I believe. And what we do end up seeing is that on the Warrior Dome that Odious ends up talking to Badana, where Badana ends up telling Madame Odious that she scheduled the Galactic Ninjas to be the next uh, guest for um, the Warrior Dome, you know, episode next week. So what we do end up seeing is that that's going to happen and that's going to be a really, really awesome episode um, because th those are going to be a whole bunch of ninjas um, that are monsters, which will be interesting. And it seems like Cosmo gets to level 10 and he actually gets the Game Goblin's curse put on him, which is interesting. And eventually, Madame Odia says the only way to stop this curse is if he sees himself in the mirror. So she ends up pulling out a mirror and... What happens is that Cosmo freaks out and he stops playing the game. So the episode ends there. So again, as I said before, I am not saying this is one of the best episodes ever, but I think that as far as Super Ninja Steel goes, it's definitely one of the better ones we've had so far. And as far as Ninja Steel goes, it's actually not a bad episode if you include both seasons. Um, you know, it's a filler, but it's a filler that actually had some interesting things in it. And also foreshadowing is not a bad thing to see. I actually love that they did that because it's a rare thing that they should do more often because that way, you know, it's a more connected plot. You know, connecting plots is always a better, it can always be a really good thing because that shows that there's progression in story rather than, you know, every episode is its own story, you know? 
that's a really good thing to me. So I appreciate that. I am definitely looking forward to next week's episode because the Galactic Ninjas will definitely be an interesting group of ninjas to see. So keep an eye on that episode next Saturday. Uh, so I'm telling you guys, I'm Crazy Samurai 71, and goodbye, guys.